Hey, we're back! How did that happen? Blimey, TV people, what can you say? Right, now this bit is called You're on CFFC, and this is the bit where we like to hear from you, uh, particularly if you have the decency to phone us up uh, via a Skype call, and, and I know we've got a few excellent calls lined up uh, in a minute, but uh, in the normal course of events, we also encourage you completely to uh, batter Chelsea Chadder, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, on Mixler, and that means you can join in with him by going to mixlr.com forward slash Chelsea hyphen fancast. And of course, you can email me during the week. Our email address is chelseafancast at gmail.com. And of course, you can always uh, keep up with what's going on and, and you can get hold of Chadder during the show by tweeting us at Chelsea Fancast and use the hashtag Chelsea Fancast because that makes it a little bit easier for him. So there we go. And we, we can get hold of you and we can find out what you want. But I think we've got a, we've got a call on the line. We haven't, we haven't got a call on the line yet. Well, that's a bit of a shame. But what we have got is we've got Chelsea Chadder. He's got a question for us, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I've got a question just to ask you guys. When Ryan Bertrand comes back from injury, uh, do you think he'll um, be second choice behind Ash, or do you think Aspie will be playing there? If, As if, As if um, Aspilicueta keeps up his form, I think Cole's going to have a job to displace him, let alone Bertrand. So, what, what, do we, what do we feel about the fact that Aspie is in fact a right back, not a left back? What do we feel about the fact that Jose is putting a, a right back in a left back role where we've got? I mean, I know Bertrand's injured, but. I think, you know, he's won a Champions League medal. Ryan Bertrand's won the European Cup. I mean, you know, I, 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 that sits a bit uncomfortably with me. I'd like, I mean, I, I, we'd all like to see Bertrand given the chance to, the chance to play, but when it's a results driven thing, and actually we all want to see Aspilicueta play as well, because he was excellent last year and looked like he wasn't going to get a look in this year, so I it's, do, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I do like him, but I don't like it when he's called Dave, because he's called César Aspilicueta, OK? Get the name yeah. right. Yeah. That was pretty good. <laughs> you are, you've been bugging me off all night, Ross. That was the you best get, effort I've made in a right long time. You get it right when you don't try. <laughs> I thought that was decent anyway. Yeah, thank you, Darren. I think Darren's now my favourite. You're not anymore. Said it as well. Exactly. Now, ten must do. Exactly. It's, it is a shame, though, for Bertrand that obviously Asby has sort of made up position his own. And I think, like Pablo was saying, though, about his form, I, I, I think Ashley Cole will come straight back in how Mourinho operates. But... Um, it was bad for Bertrand that obviously SP was there and has been playing well. Oh, right. He does look comfortable there. We've got a call on the line. Uh, they've now got him on the line. Now, this is brilliant, this call. This is a guy called Richard Weeks, and Richard uh, sits in the shed end. And uh, I, he tweeted me last week. He's very keen. This is very relevant to what we were talking about when we were talking to you about the trust, Tim. But he's very concerned about the atmosphere in the shed end, and he's uh, got some ideas about how we can do something about it. And I've been very looking forward to hearing him all week. So, uh, is he there? I am indeed. <laughs> Hello, Richard. Nice to speak to you. How are you? Uh, I'm right. It's a bit echoey where I am, but uh, yeah, I'm popping up. I'm right. <laughs> well, I can. It's probably because you're you're in a little kind of speaker. It's a bit like being in a cabin, so you know that's probably why it's echoing. When people say I'm echoey, I'm in the toilet normally. Yeah. <laughs> where <laughs> are you? Always, but I'm sort of using it as a anyway. All right, Richard. Tell us all about your idea to get some atmosphere going in the shed. I mean, the idea is is quite simple. I mean, we had Tim Rose on talking about you know, the, the support of trust and everything, but it's sort of taking a step back, really, into the stands and really just looking to gather regular Chavez goers, um, you know, people that not necessarily season ticket holders, but to sort of get together, to meet up before games um, and really sort of create ideas for both visual. Uh, visual displays is something that I'm really passionate about, really. Um, I really think that it's brilliant and I think it adds a lot to the atmosphere. And it's also something that I think the club, both the supporters and the uh, the team, could be proud of to see. I mean, I love, I absolutely love the flags that go across uh, Matthew Harding Lower. But um, as well as visual displays, it really is looking to sort of, you know, generate a better vocal atmosphere there. And, you know, I've had quite a lot of good ideas from people that have already sort of joined up, so to speak. And they sent me some great, you know, little ideas that, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get any other way by someone just going, oh, you know, guess what, mate, this might work. And so I mean, it's really starting to pick up, and I've got about eight people from the shed that are willing to really muck in and help out with it all, and I'm really just looking to get a final sort of cluster of people. Um, I am going to talk to the guys that sit around me at the next home game to see how many I can sort of, you know, get to, get to help out. But, yeah, that's Richard, are you easy. shed upper or lower? Uh, shed upper. Shed upper. I'm, I'm shed upper as well, so uh, more, than, more than happy to have a beer with you as well. 
Uh, great. Where, where about you, sir? Uh, towards towards gate eight, <coughs> on the west hand side. Oh uh, yeah, I'm 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 the middle, right for the away fans. Uh, I right think the west side. You know what? Actually, I didn't I didn't know that's where you sat, uh, Richard. But a, a lot of the older uh, members of uh, the uh, match goers, like myself, uh, yeah. have often bemoaned the fact that actually what we need right next to the away fans are some of our most vociferous, loud fans because, you know, frankly, you're in a prime position because they're going to yeah. give it to you vocally, I hasten to add, and you need to give it back to them vocally. It's very, very important. It's very much part of what going to football was always about for me. Absolutely, um, but, I mean, sorry, just, just another thing. I mean, I know it's been mentioned before, the stewards, I mean, they have a laugh with us and they, they're always smiling when they're telling us to sit down, but... It's sort of one rule for us, a different rule for a waste man. Mm. It's always the way. I mean, mm. we, we, we were, uh, Pablo and I were, were down at the, uh, in, the, in the Arsenal um, League Cup match and we were right next to the Arsenal fans and we were just taking the mick the whole game and they, they were trying to respond, but every time they even, you know, tw uh, twitched, a steward would tell them to sit down. So I, 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 it's difficult for, for the home fans. Rest of the way. Now, the other thing, Richard, is that, you know, you're, you're talking to some of the guys around the table, one of whom has been very instrumental in the flags and the Matty Harding upper and lower, and, and maybe he can help you get a flag organised in the shed? Well, yeah, I mean, I heard once that we had one, but... Um... I don't know where it disappears to, but I mean, definitely things like that are really what I want to bring back. To Darren, the Darren, tell him how he can do well, that. The flag's in a big wheelie bin, and the reason for it is that we can't use it in the moment because they say for health and safety reasons that if the flag goes from where Ross is, out near the west end, into the middle part, there's a danger it will go over to the away supporters. Yeah. Why, when they take 1500, we can't start it from that divide and go over? Uh, for some reason, the health and safety don't want our head of... Uh, I don't have security or health and safety. One or the other don't want the overhead flag to be in the shed end. But there is one yeah. ready for it, which, like I say, sits in this... Why can't it go down rather than across? Um, I don't know if it's, it's have long enough it's out. It's, yeah, it's it's quite, by the time it's unravelled, it will literally only be a few seconds before right. it goes again. It's a, it's a, that's a lot shallower, isn't it, the mm. shed, than it's, it is in the Matty Harding? Well, then you can go down on the, yeah. hard, on the Harding anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim, what do you... Tim, hang on a minute, Richard. Tim, what, what do you think all about, about Richard's efforts to try and get it going in the shed? Well, I think visual displays are an excellent thing. I mean, I... I <coughs> it's, I sit in the Matthew Harding upper and every week Darren is organising the flags but it's fantastic because it does actually give a, a visual identity to that end the away fans see it mm. I think it'd be good if they were all round the ground now there, there may be logistical issues but it's interesting we went Ross and I were at this meeting last week Liverpool um, <coughs> they seem to manage to have far more success in getting flags all round the ground at Liverpool certainly certain parts of the ground they, 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 they seem they seem comfortable. So I think it's something, there may be opportunities to talk to Chelsea more. I mean, you know far more than me, Dan. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know what other teams do and what sort of things, because things could logistically work. There's other things we can have instead of just the same flags, lot of sort of mirroring the Matthew Harding, and there's other things we can do in this shed, and then, you know, by all means, it should be explored, and there should be, like, it would be good to have things there. I mean, I even think at the back of the shed upper, though, where the brick wall is, it seems to go quite high up. You could even, like, hang banners and things like that. You could put something there. Um, yeah. There is room for things. Richard, well, we, we've got to go, unfortunately, because we've got another call waiting. But before you no, go, right. before you go, um, where can we... I mean, you know, you've got a Twitter address, haven't you, set up for this campaign? Absolutely, what? yeah. It's, uh, it's at shed underscore atmosphere on Twitter. And if you, if you follow me and tweet me, I'll happily respond. And if you want to join up, then I'll give you an email address you can email me on. And I'll be sending out an email to everyone who's joined up in the next coming days. Excellent. Well, look, look, keep up the good work, and I hope it comes off. And keep in touch with us and, and also the Trust. We'll, we'll see what we can do to help, because, frankly, it's not an easy thing to try and get going, and anybody who tries to get some atmosphere yeah. going at the bridge needs applauding. Absolutely. So, so well done. Great. Thank you very much, mate. We'll, uh, hopefully day. we'll keep in touch, yeah? Cracking, mate. Nice one. Thank you very much. Cheers, that, was, that was brilliant. Yeah, I, I, mean, yeah. I mean that, because it's yeah. not easy, is it? No. The only thing I wanted to say was about the stewarding, that they, they'd admit it themselves, Chelsea stewards. They're told that it will antagonise the away fans mm. more by telling the away fans to sit down and yeah. do things. It's just going to annoy yeah. them. You they, can't win. Every team does it. They let the away fans get away with things. They focus mm. on their own fans because yeah. they can control them. It, w it was seven years ago when I think <coughs> the CFC UK net ran a, a shed, shed 50 or Shed 100. CFC campaign. net. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry, yeah, you're yeah, mixing too. Yeah. Uh, and that was when CFC was, uh, Net UK. Yeah, CFC UK. How about that? Uh. Whoever it was, uh, they they had a they had a campaign to get uh, 
atmosphere and sort of people who wanted to sing back in the shed yeah. up. And that was actually when I was a member, yeah. and that caused me to be, when, when I returned from uni, to be a season ticket holder. Oh. And that was actually really successful. And I, and I think until <coughs> really this season and last, the atmosphere in the yeah. shed up has been pretty good. They need it back now. Uh, hopefully, we've got uh, Mr. Dan Levine on the phone. I might get, uh, yeah, well, almost. He's, he, I don't know what he's, maybe he's doing his makeup. Maybe we haven't told him he's going to be on the phone, not, not <laughs> Skype. I don't know. Um, quick, quick point. On, on that matter, I, I think that the bigger issue for me in atmosphere generally, I think we should do a special on atmosphere at some stage actually, but I remember you sent me an email because the Trust was obviously going to be talking about to this about the Fans Forum, aren't they, Pablo? Yeah, um, atmosphere is one of, the, one of the three main issues that's going to be at the Fans Forum, which is on Sunday, atmosphere, ticketing and um, security, so the head of security will be... And Thomas Cook. And, and, Tom, and Thomas Cook as well, also. Um, so if any listeners have any points on any of those four issues that they want raised at the forum, they need to email the Chelsea Fancast Gmail address. Chelsea Fancast at gmail.com. Quite. Bef before, before Saturday, and I'll do my best to get them up. I mean, my, my feeling on atmosphere, and, and it's often been talked about, about what on earth we can do with it, and... I, I did email you back quite flippantly. I said, Tim, two words, safe standing. Absolutely. For me, that's the only way we're going to get uh, any atmosphere but back in the ground. there is a halfway house, um, which is unreserved seating. Yes. So pe the people... Police are going to hate that. But I can understand that the police and the, yeah. the club security, again, we, Darren's got more experience. We've, we've, got, we've, got, we've, got, like we've got Dan on the phone. I'm going to have to hold you there. We've got, <laughs> we've got Dan Levine. Now, I should tee this up. Dan has been... He writes for the uh, Fulham Chronicle. He's known on Twitter as Bruce Chronicle by his friends. Uh, but he's been at the press conference uh, by uh, Jose today, uh, pre the Basel match. So I'm really privileged that we got Dan to kind of phone us almost live from the press conference tell us what on earth's been going on because we've been sat in a studio and don't know. So, Dan, are you there? Yes, I am, live from the mean streets of Basel, which you listen very carefully in the background. You'll hear the fondue bobbling, you'll, you'll hear the tobin iron cracking, and you might hear a few fist pop kicking. Mate, if, 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 <laughs> I, I just wish you could see. I just wish you could see us, because the only picture we could find of you was with you holding up your bike aloft. I do hope you haven't had to ride all the way out to uh, Basel. No, you're right. I have actually ridden all the way to Switzerland. Yes, it only took me two weeks. <laughs> uh, the sacrifices. The sacrifices I made to get live to go live for you. You're an absolute legend, my friend. So tell tell us what happened, because we know nothing about the presser. What happened? Uh, Jose came in. He seemed to be in pretty good spirits. Uh, he, he, he talked about various different team things. Uh, you know, there were lots and lots of questions about um, whether Torres was going to be part of the game. Apparently, Torres is ready. So I hear. Uh, no hints given away. Torres has been training and he's ready. Um, there were questions, of course, about Juan Mata, as there always are. And uh, you know, he, he didn't sound so confident on Mata. He said it's difficult finding him a place in the team at the moment, which doesn't sound too good for the long term. That's, um, a very, that's a very good point, isn't it? And, I, and I, I, one thing I do know, because I was having a, a sly beer before the show and they had Sky Sports News on, and I, and I hear that Luis is also out, but he's actually got a knee injury, hasn't he? Yeah, that's right. Louis hasn't travelled. He's got a bruised knee. He's out for a week. That's the official version. Thank yeah. you very well. Is that, is that, uh, do you believe that, or is that just fluff? Oh, uh, well, I, 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 as you know, I believe everything Chelsea Football Club tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, it is worrying, isn't it? I mean, you know, uh, I've got a, uh, you know, I never like to believe all these rumours, and, and and I know that you you have a very intelligent view on this, and you're like me, quite circumspect about what you hear. But it is worrying, isn't it, with Matter and Louise? I, 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 you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're offloaded in, in, in January. Well, there's, there's two yeah, two players there who are obviously trying to get into World Cup squads for the, uh, the, the coming summer. Um, Louise and Matter and you've got a transfer winning coming, a window coming up, and you wonder that for both of them, whether there's only one direction. I hate One Direction. They're a terrible <laughs> band. <laughs> It's not what you're saying, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. I stumped Dan. How fantastic. Anyway, look, it's all, in all seriousness, mate, what else, what else came out of the press? Uh, I mean, did you get any kind of inklings on the, on the potential line-up? Well, well it, it's, I reckon it's the most difficult line-up to pick for, for, well, for a good time, anyway, because you know what formation they're going to play. You, you know 21 players have gone out. You know, it's, it's, the only thing you know is that Louis isn't going to be playing. Um... But, but aside from all of that stuff, I think the most important thing that came out of it was that we now know about Jose's haircut. 
Yeah, I don't. Why is everybody going on about this? It's bizarre. I, I, I did an interview with Talk Sport on Friday night, and, and Bobby Gould, the, the first time I've done this particular slot with them, where Bobby's actually not been off having a pee or, or a coffee break or whatever. And I thought, oh, I'm, I might actually get an intelligent question from him. And the first thing he said to me is, what do you think about Jose's new haircut? And I, well, I said, well, I hadn't seen it. So what is the fuss well, about the haircut? Well, the, the, thing that, the things that we learned this evening are quite interesting. And they are, we, we learned the identity of the barber. Ah. He himself, himself. He, Jose he did, did it, it. He said, he, he cut his own hair with Fernando Torres' clippers. So Jose did a selfie? <laughs> yes. So I'll... Jose cut his own hair with Fernando Torres' clippers, and he was asked what, how, how it all felt, and he said, well, it's nice, <laughs> and it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and it's cheap. You can't argue with that. I do like that. And, uh, and he was asked what Mrs Mourinho thought of it, and he said that um, she's fine, but I sent a text message home with a picture first just to check I was allowed back in the house. <laughs> Top man. Top man. Brilliant. Um, uh, now, Dan, you're actually out in Basel now. Um, are there many Chelsea boys out there at the moment? Is there a good atmosphere? Uh, yeah, just stood outside the St Andrews Scottish English Welsh pub, and there's plenty of Chelsea in there. I think most are coming out tomorrow, but there are certainly plenty of Chelsea here, and uh, you know, they'll be making a good noise tomorrow night, I'm sure. Which is, that's not a bad effort considering we've been out there. Not, I mean, you know, a lot, lot of people that I know that go get a bit picky and cheesy with their uh, away trips, particularly in Europe. And if they've been there before, they quite often will turn their nose of it, up at it, particularly if it's recent. Well, the other thing you want to say about Basel, Switzerland particularly, you know, it's a very expensive place to come. I don't think we saw um, that. You know, the, the, the flights aren't so bad, but once you get in, everything is crushingly expensive. The hotels, you know, hotels, 200 quid a night, it's, it's not a cheap place to go. How much no, are the baked beans? <laughs> <laughs> Six pounds fifty a plate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan. Dan, just before you go, because we got we got to we got to rush on, sadly. But um, what's your prediction for tomorrow's night? It's a bit of a weird game, really, isn't it? Because we're pretty much qualified. Uh, it is a weird game. They are pretty much qualified. But Jody says he wants to kill them, and I think he will. I'm going three 0 Going three 0 Who's going to score? Uh, <laughs> um, Eto uh, Hazard. Hazard 2, I'll say. I like that. We'll hold you to that, obviously, Dan, and, and you can come back and see us for real on the show, although I do like this. Every time you go uh, to Europe, I kind of like the idea of doing a post-presser conversation with you. Yeah, I can do that, and, and I might even bring you back in time to your own. I'd be very happy if you did, <laughs> although Ross tells me that they're not like they used to be in my day. Could you make it oh, a white yeah. one? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> We've got to go, sadly. Dan, thank you very much, mate. Enjoy the game tomorrow. Safe trip Dan. back, fella. Yeah, cheers, Dan. Thank you. See you, mate. That is... Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's good. So, like, Matt is going to start. It's, Mourinho, would, when he says things like that and he plays things down, it's because he's going to do it. Matt will start. OK. Um, unfortunately, I think we are out of time. I thought we were going to have... Uh, we're going to have a... I don't know. I don't know what that means. You could be sticking your finger up. I've got one minute. You want me to waffle on for one minute? Okay. I can do that. Can I just say... Um... <laughs> <laughs> on the, on so the professional game, we, yes. we can uh, lose and still top the group. Yep. We can, if we draw, we're qualified. And if we win, uh, we're automatically top of the group, which means that Jose will probably be able to select a few youth and reserve players for the final game. So Yeah, that'd be nice. Which won't sell many tickets. Well, uh, well that I shouldn't be his, that know, shouldn't be his issue, should it? Flip comment, sorry. Maybe they can just give them ten loyalty <laughs> points, too. <Yeah>. No. <laughs> it, it will be eight loyalty points, yeah. 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 If, we do get, if we do get the win, it would be a really good experience yeah. for... Uh, for All right. Yeah. OK, now Greg's giving me the finger in the nicest possible way, which means the time for this part of the show is sadly up. But do not worry, my dear friends who love Chelsea as much as me. We will be back very, very soon, and we will be hearing from my bestest, bestest stats man friend. He is known to us as Chelsea Chadder, the Stat Meister General.